Hi, James Wiffen here for CG Tuts, and in this first part of a two-part tutorial series, we'll be taking this live-action footage and uh, putting in some uh, CG glass, which will uh, receive reflections from the live-action footage, as well as an HDR uh, image-based lighting setup, and it will also refract uh, the footage, the live-action footage as well. And we'll also be looking at how we can get these great-looking caustic patterns to appear. And in the second part of the series over at AE Tuts, we'll be looking at how we can composite all our passes together inside of Nuke, and also how we can refract uh, 2D elements such as the Tuts Plus logos. Okay, here in PF Track, uh, step one is to match move our scene. And before we do, let's uh, undistort this footage. It has a small amount of barrel distortion, and I want to make the match move as accurate as possible. So I happen to know that my camera's uh, distortion is 0.041. And uh, you can calculate that by using these uh, measurement lines and hitting solve. And once we've done that, let's add an auto track in here. And um, it's a good idea to sometimes enhance the footage so it uh, makes tracking a bit easier. I'll increase the contrast and then maybe uh, darken it down just a little bit. And uh, that looks good. So under parameters, let's um, take a look here. If I go back to the very start, of the scene and turn on preview, we can see the difference uh, between small and large uh, where it places the tracks. Just makes a lot more sense when we set it to the feature scale to large. Um, we can see these are all good tracking points as opposed to these points which are pretty much, uh, which are basically at, at a very bad spot. Uh, I doubt it could track that accurately at all. So we'll go with large feature scales with better accuracy. This will take a lot longer, but uh, I think it's worth it. And uh, I want some more tracks, and I want more targets, and I want to increase the window size, which is basically what it's going to be tracking. The larger that is, the more accurate, uh, also the slower it will go. And because most of the movement in this scene is um, horizontal, I'm just going to lower the search range to 25 just to make uh, this quicker, because that's the vertical search range. And uh, these are all good. So let's go ahead and hit auto track. And this will take a little while. So I'll just let this go uh, and I'll see you when it's done. Okay, that's finished. And I've also gone through and uh, removed all the bad tracks. You'll know if they're bad because they don't stick. They'll be uh, jittering around the place. And that's a little bit of a tedious task, just going through and simply clicking on the ones that are inaccurate and hitting delete um, on the keyboard twice. So once you've done that, uh, I'm just going to add in some uh, user features just because uh, towards the end here, we sort of don't have uh, a feature here. I'd sort of like a feature there um, just to make it a bit more accurate. You don't have to, but I think it's a good idea. So I've actually just got that on the clipboard. I'll paste it in and then uh, hook that up underneath the auto track. So I've got two trackers here. And uh, when you're doing uh, user tracks, make sure that they're hidden when they're not on the screen. So uh, you can see here that tracker 02 uh, is actually still on the screen even though it's not being tracked because it goes off the screen. So make sure that uh, they're hidden when they're not on the screen. And to do that, uh, we click on track 02 and um, this is the very last frame. So previously, I want to hide it. And once that's done, uh, it will be disappeared. It will disappear from all previous frames but as soon as it comes here, it uh, begins tracking and stays till the end. So once we've done all of those, I'm going to add in a uh, camera solve. And I'm gonna tell PF Track that I know the focal length is 18.6. Uh, uh, again, you can uh, find the focal length for your camera by using the estimate focal length, but I already know, which is cool, so with that done, we can pretty much just go ahead and solve these. Okay, here's our camera solve, and uh, let's take a look at it in 3D space to sort of uh, get a better idea of what's going on. And I'll just move this over. So we can sort of see we have our ground plane here, but it's not very accurate. Um, this chessboard here actually isn't perfectly straight. It has a bow in the middle, but this ground plane is uh, quite inaccurate and I think what's causing that is PF track is uh, weighting those two user tracks that I had uh, too heavily so what I might do is uh, unsolve all and 
actually that doesn't really unsolve it. I'm just going to add a new uh, camera solver. And in this camera solver, I will again tell it that I know the focal length is 18.6, but in the trackers, I'm just going to take the hard uh, weighting off both user tracks and uh, solve again. So hopefully now in the 3D space, uh, we should have a much, um, they, they look a lot better. They actually look like they're part of a plane uh, as opposed to before had some extreme outliers. And also what we can do is in the errors, um, we can trim these. Uh, don't put the threshold too, hot, too low, um, otherwise we won't have enough trackers to solve accurately, but I'm going to keep it around here and then refine all. Okay, and that looks pretty good. These all look like they're part of the um, the same plane, and uh, the reason I'm not constraining them is again uh, because this isn't actually uh, perfectly straight, this checkerboard, so that would probably make it um, less accurate overall. So back in the one view, I'll just scrub through and uh, you can cache the whole thing to RAM if you want to uh, play it back in real time. But I'm not going to do that or bought. And let's orient our scene now. Um, and basically the way we, I like to orient the scene is the exact same way you uh, calculate the focal length, which is using the axes here. So let's uh, take off these uh, distracting elements and let's just solo with the X and basically I'm going to uh, just tell PF track where the X axis is. So one point here, another there, and one point here, another there. And we can see that the board isn't perfectly straight, but that's fine. And I'll just do the z-axis as well. We uh, won't really worry about the y-axis because we don't have, uh, we do have some things in the background that we could use, but um, once you do the x and z, uh, the y-axis is not much, uh, it really can't, there really can't be too many uh, angles it can be. Once you've done the uh, X and Z, there's uh, not too much um, leeway in where the Y axis could be oriented, so it pretty much gives you the Y axis for free if you've done the X and Z. So if I show the ground, um, sorry, yeah, show the ground, you'll see that uh, we have the Y axis pointing uh, relatively straight up. And let's take off the edit mode to none and show our trackers again, and I'll just set the origin as this tracker here. Now we might want to rotate it a little bit um, this way. Not too much because we'll be upsetting the um, this uh, rotation as well. And yes, again, the reason these won't line up perfectly is just because the board isn't straight and also other things such as the focal length isn't perfect, nor is the, uh, the undistortion the, uh, of our barrel distortion. So... This is looking pretty good though. Um, it's very smooth. We have very low error. So we can now export this to Maya using the uh, export node, wherever that is. And uh, we want to use Maya 2011. And what we'll also want to do is not only just export the camera, but the actual clip itself, because we've applied, um, we've, we've understorted the footage we need to export this uh, so that in the Maya scene we will be referencing this undistorted footage as opposed to the other raw footage. And also I'm going to undistort this uh, PF barrel which is pretty much just a, a node that you can use inside of Nuke to uh, redistort the footage at the end of uh, your compositing. So once you've done all those three, I'll see you in Maya. Okay, here's the scene in Maya. Um, this is the default Maya project uh, folder structure and I've just created my own folder called footage and here we have the undistorted footage from PF track. Uh, under cameras we have the match move camera and the PF barrel uh, distortion node and under source images I've just added uh, two 
uh, images that we'll be needing. One is a high dynamic range image of the uh, of this office uh, that we can use for reflections, as well as a um, a complete uh, image of the chessboard. As you'll notice in the footage, the chessboard gets cut off. It's not all on screen. Um, we will be using this footage here to get some reflections into the scene, but um, obviously as it's cut off, that's not really going to be good enough for the chessboard. So let's first of all come in and um, add that chessboard into the scene. And we can do that just by creating an image plane here. I'm just going to make sure that it's actually square for now. If we go into the inputs, let's just make it 30 by 30. And if we scale it up, uh, we will notice it's not going to sit exactly again because the chessboard isn't uh, completely even. But let's just do our best and if we hit 6 we can see that there and uh, under the hyper shade let's create a mental ray MAX passes and um, with the zero reflectivity let's just add in a file node uh, turn it, the filtering off make sure uh, we tell you my that it's an sRGB image and uh, under source images let's use the chessboard and let's um, assign that here. So we can see uh, that the checker at the, the corner is actually the wrong one. Uh, so if we hit E, we can just, and if we uh, press J, we can get discrete rotate and we can make sure that we have the right, um, the right checkers in the right place. And we can see that um, it sort of lines up here, but it's definitely not lining up here. If we hit uh, W, then insert, and then press V, or hold down V, and middle mouse button, we can move the um, the pivot point to that uh, location. And then if we hit insert again, we can get out of pivot mode and just uh, sort of scale the, um, or manipulate this, uh, just hitting space bar and uh, going to another view where we can sort of align this a little better uh, if we grab maybe this edge here and sort of push it up there and it sort of looks like it's uh, if we just go object mode and go um, transparent we should be able to see okay that's looking okay um, this plane here needs to come back a bit more. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, that'll probably be good enough. Okay, so once we've got that, uh, let's just go and name this. This is our chessboard. And uh, let's create the actual ground plane here. Uh, and that will just be another plane. This one will be larger, doesn't matter. Um, we can make this one as large as we want it really and this will be our shadow catcher and uh, what we want to do is if I just hide this for a second we want to basically project the um, the original footage uh, onto the shadow catcher so that uh, any well the object that we have in our scene will catch the reflections uh, from that and also it will cast its shadow back onto the um, the raw footage of the, the plate as opposed to our uh, chessboard uh, plane that we just created so if I turn both of these back on uh, let's go to the hyper shade and create a, another MIA material X passes uh, no reflectivity again and we'll be using a projection and uh, we'll be projecting an image, which will be a file, which is which will be our um, which will be the same file as our uh, image plane. It will be under footage, undistorted. Okay, so that's our original footage, and make sure that's sRGB and no filtering. If we just right-click and graph network this, um, the projection needs to be from a camera and that camera would be camera O or camera O1. I'm just going to rename that to render cam. 